Hi, my name is Natalia powers -Riggs. I'm a fourth year graduate student in the lab of Michael Wasilewski here in the chemistry department of Northwestern University. My lab designs materials that mimic photosynthesis. Now nature is great at making use of the energy from the sun. One of the things that makes photosynthesis work so well is the fact that each part of the process is really well ordered. It's kind of like making something out of bricks. One brick on its own doesn't really do much, and if you have a random pile of them, it still won't be much of a structure. But we can order them to form something, like a pathway or a wall, and the way that they're stacked in different patterns have functional and aesthetic uses. Now in the example of bricks, you'd be able to move them around the way that you'd want them to be. But for molecules, it's not that easy. You can't line up individual molecules because they're so small. This is where chemistry comes into play. In my research, I study different kinds of bonds that can create order for larger structures. You'll remember that covalent bonds share electrons between two atoms. In some cases, however, one atom pulls the electrons closer to itself, creating a dipole with a negative end and a positive end. When something from the positive end of the bond, so in this case the hydrogen, reaches out to the negative end of another molecule, this forms a hydrogen bond. Now in DNA, guanine, so the molecule over here, is usually bonded with cytosine. However, there are times when guanine can actually bond with itself. So when you have four guanine molecules that are in close proximity, in certain conditions, they're able to undergo hydrogen bonding to create this four-membered structure called a quadruplex. My research is all about using this as a way to create order with these bricks. Now, if I attach another molecule, something that has some interesting property that we want to study, to the guanine, we can make what is essentially a smart brick, like we talked about earlier. Now, this molecule knows how it's going to stack, and we can use it to make really interesting structures without having to put down each piece one by one. For instance, it can make a structure that looks like this. So here, the guanine has formed that quadruplex, but the other pieces are still attached to it. And while we sometimes have structures that look like this, more often they're multiple layers and end up looking something like this. So like I mentioned before, molecules are so small that we can't actually see if we've made the structure that we wanted. So we need special tools that help us identify the structure of this guanine quadruplex. One of these tools is NMR, or nuclear magnetic resonance. NMR tells us about the environment that a hydrogen atom is in. For instance, when the molecule is in solution just floating around, the spectrum will look something like this. But as it forms a more ordered structure, the spectrum changes. In addition to NMR, we can go to Argonne National Lab and use techniques like X-ray scattering, in which the way the X-ray beams travel after hitting my sample will show us how large the structure is. Knowing we can make the structure, we can do so many more experiments to see whether we can really mimic photosynthesis. Now in my lab, we're making a variety of molecular systems to look at how well these systems can absorb light and convert it into energy. At the end of the day, our goal is to use basic chemistry concepts to design a system that can do something really complex, like make energy from the sun. Then, hopefully, we can produce clean energy the way nature does, but better.